Welcome to a Saturday edition, which is normally a live stream, but today is going to be a premiere for our old and new number 10 set. Did I say that correctly? Our old or new set number 10 winners. Before we reveal who these winners are, we just have to make a special note and broadcast announcement. <laughs> And that is that none of these winners, except maybe Michael, but even Michael wasn't that great, uh, really did an absolutely shitty job when it came to this old or new set number 10. For those of you who are just watching this for the first time or don't know what I'm talking about when I say old or new set number 10, we have had 10 of these sets. Now, Colin, who is our wonderful, blimey, uh, English bloke, who has been setting up these sets. What he basically does is send in five songs and these five songs could either be an old song that has been on the channel before or a new song that we've never heard before. We've had a ton of songs on this channel now that we're going on almost six years. And typically people do pretty well in guessing whether it's an old or a new song. That didn't happen in this older new set number 10 because this is the 10th one. Everyone did horrible, including me. I got a zero, big goose egg, zero out of five. <laughs> and everybody else got like one out of five or two out of five. I think Michael, who is the best, was a three out of five, if I remember correctly. You guys can correct me in the chat if I'm wrong about that one. So there wasn't a ton of people that showed up on the day that we did the actual set. So because there wasn't other people to choose from and because everyone did so badly on it, Poor Colin just had to do a randomizer and just select people. So all of these people today are not really winners. They are the winners of the losers, <laughs> including me. I was one of them, even though I got a big goose egg. And because of the theme of this set, because if uh, you're a winner of the old or new, uh, if you get a five out of five, which has happened a couple of times on some past sets, you get a full reaction set, which is five songs typically, that Colin pays for. Or if you get like a three out of five or four out of five, depending, you might get a one song set uh, choice on the set. And that's what this is today. Nobody was good enough to get a full set to themselves. However, the people that are going today uh, randomly got chosen because a randomizer chose them because everybody did so badly. And they got to pick one song. And the theme of this set was picked by Ryan who helped pick the songs with Colin that went on the last older new set number 10. Got it? Probably not. If you are not understanding what we're talking about, it just means you need to come to the channel more and you need to participate in these older new set challenges so that you may win a free recommendation or suggestion on this channel and I will react to it. So show up later. And if it, that's a great segue into talking about this real quick. If you do want to show up later or you do want to turn in a song, uh, there is a list over here to my left that will kind of break it down for you how you can do that. Uh, but if you really want a breakdown of how to do that, then just go to the channel's homepage, my channel's homepage, and the intro video to the channel will explain to you how you can turn in sets step by step. And then hopefully you can turn in a song or a set or whatever you want to do and uh, we can get this road on the show. <laughs> But nonetheless, our winners for today are Michael, Para, uh, and then Sasha, also the German boy, has won one. And then I won one, but I thought because I'm terrible, and the theme of this set is by Ryan, he wants songs that just make him headbang until he can't stop. I honestly just don't know songs like that. Or the songs that I do know are because they've been on this channel and I like them because they were on this channel. So outside of that, uh, I don't know a ton of them. So I just decided to give it to another. Because when, when Ryan says uh, like a headbanging song, like a balls to the wall song, he means like very like death metal, death, like I think really heavy, like Archspire I'm guessing is like a band that would be a part of that. Um, I don't know any of those bands because it's not typically the stuff that I listen to on my own unless it's suggested on here. So I gave it to Mr. Cucumber, who is a, uh, you know, a nice little eeny bitsy teeny weeny, if you know what I mean. 
uh, guy on the channel, a subscriber on the channel, and he picked a song for me that will go on this. And then the final person uh, was Scott K. So that are our, that's the five people that will be going in that order. And so let's get this a road on the show to see how much we can hurt Ryan's neck. And if we can get Ryan's neck to hurt by the end of this set, then uh, I think we have done something uh, for humanity. <laughs> so as I said, I couldn't make it to this live today, which we normally have live sets on Saturdays because I am going to the spring game. So while you guys are watching this, I will probably be at the Ohio State spring football game. Uh, it's supposed to be nice weather, hopefully, and hopefully it is. Uh, and let's see what this is, and I will watch it when I come back and see what you guys all pick and see if Ryan is actually happy. So the first person on our set today is Mr. Michael, who had the three out of five, which was I think was the best that we had today. And this is what he says. He says, okay, here is my pick for Ryan's headbanger set. I was having trouble thinking of something for this set, <laughs> like I did. While a lot of bands I like might do a headbanger swing, I'm not into too many headbanger bands like me. I didn't know what to do, but I remember a song that was kind of a heavy song that I wanted to use on a set list before. So I'm just gonna go with this now. The, the artist is Steve Vai and the song is called Bad Horsey. A little background for this one, when Steve did the C Crossroads movie, yeah, the one with uh, Ralph Macchio, <laughs> acting like he could play guitar. There's a part where they start the guitar duel and he does a certain riff. On the Alien Love Secrets album, he turned this riff into an entire song. Interesting, I did not know that. This was the album where they did everything live in studio with no overdubs and pretty much every song was one take if I remember correctly. So that is Bad Horsey by Steve Vai. Actually, when I was thinking of a song that I was going to uh, pick for this if I had to do it, it was going to be off of John Petrucci's solo album. Um, it was, I mean, there's a couple songs on there that are just kind of gen, 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 like very heavy, but I still don't think this, that's going to be Ryan's ideal of what he means by headbanging. I think he wants like blast beats, shit like that. So I'm going to guess I will probably like this song more than Ryan will because it's Steve Vai and it's more of my alley of kind of heavy riffs, but it's not what I think Ryan is looking for. But we'll see. Maybe it will be down that where, you know, Ryan can headbang a little bit. I'm going to guess the other songs, if they are up Ryan's alley, will probably not be songs that I like. So don't pay attention what I like or say during this video. Remember, we're trying to think what's going to make Ryan happy. <laughs> so I don't know if Ryan's going to be too happy about this, but let's get into Bad Horsey. Here we go. Let's turn it up a little bit. So yeah, this is definitely the kind of stuff, damage control. This is kind of stuff I was thinking about, like da 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 da. Yeah. See, I like this kind of heavy riff, but it's not blast beat. Lower tempo. I know a lot of Steve Vai songs, but I don't know a lot of them either. So I don't know this song, but I definitely dig it so far. Ryan's neck, even if he is headbanging like I am. <laughs> Sounds like Mr. Ed. Uh, it's not gonna be headbanging enough and hard enough to hurt. And because it's Steve I, it's an instrumental, which I think Ryan also doesn't typically like instrumental, so. I might put this on a playlist. Because he's not like 
whacking off yet. Maybe he will in a minute, but so far I like the riff. back, but I'm assuming he's going to go off here in a minute. Oh. I love how deep that is. Is he dropped? Or is he playing a 7 string on this? <laughs> it's definitely lower than it is. Can't be the end. He has not even done a solo yet. Okay. I thought that was like a fade out, and I was gonna be like, holy shit, short, and didn't like go crazy. some playing, there's some noodling. I do kind of like the phaser sound on, or sound effects on it. With that lowness, it sounds pretty good, yeah. See, Steve Vai is weird sometimes. Like, I know he's a showman and stuff. Like, oh, is that the end? I uh, I know he's a showman, and you kind of have to do stuff like that to try to get the crowd into it. But sometimes the way he does weird shit on stage, it, it is weird. It's weird. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, I'm quite shocked by that. In that, uh, other than that little noodling and hammering and stuff like that, the kind of end... He didn't really go off and do a crazy solo or anything like that, uh, which typically when you do instrumental songs, there's at some point some sort of soloing or melody. But this was just kind of like the same riff over and over again. I liked it, dug it, maybe a little too long then if that's all it was. But I, I think I put that on a playlist uh, because it was just simple, straight and to the point, kind of headbangerish. Uh, but again... Don't know what Ryan's going to say, but I'm guessing he's going to say not quite his style. Okay, but not like what he was necessarily looking for. No blast beats. We're missing the point here. But for me, that'll go on a playlist probably. <laughs> uh, 
All right, so up next is Mr. Paravarium. He says, I hope this gets you moving like it does me, Ryan. This is uh, Meshuga, and I think it's Demiurge. Demiurge is how you say it. I don't know how to say it. Here we go. I like me some Meshuga sometimes, but they are a little on the uh, avant-garde side for me and the heavy, heavy side. So this is probably what Ryan wants. singing of course but that's what I knew Meshuggah's gonna be I'm waiting for the more complex the complexity of Meshuggah to come in I, do, I guess they do have some songs that are not very complex but they do a lot of times noodle in the, uh, I guess that's my word for today, noodle. Noodle in the avant-garde style of stuff. We haven't had much sugar on the channel that much. about droning what I find interesting so far is both of these songs tempo wise is not that fast I just when I'm imagining what Ryan wants he wants this like kind of stuff not speed metal like last beats heavy quick shit that's fucking hardcore <laughs> This has some dick hairs, but it's not. The tempo keeps it at bay a little bit. <laughs> I definitely like the first one better than this so far, as far as riffage. Despite the fact that I don't like growling slash screaming slash whatever you would call most hardcore stuff does. But, ironically, like the last song, it's staying right in this pocket of, like, same kind of riff repeated over and over again. Okay, I like that change a little bit. So, Kara, this song, how, what, what about it hits you in the feels? Yeah, I guess I could see at the concert people just fucking unloading. But I do feel like the tempo is just like, yeah, I guess it just kind of sit into it just. Is there not going to be another change? Because this is like the last song. There wasn't a change much. It was just the same thing. It adds a droning of... 
effect to it. I mean, I'm headbanging to this. This would, I'm just surprised because this is actually this kind of riffage in the last, this song and last song are more my style. I don't know if it's going to be Ryan's style, but I could be wrong. Is it fading out? Is this the end? I'm quite surprised with your guys' picks so far. This is interesting. Not what I expected, that's for sure. Uh, if like Scott K picks a song like this and Cucumber, I don't know what Sasha's gonna pick, but Cucumber and Scott K, I have to pitch something that's like what I'm talking about, I think Ryan's looking for. <laughs> but Para knows Ryan too, so. Maybe this is exactly what Ryan wants. Is your, is your head and neck hurting yet, Ryan, after these two songs? <laughs> is that it? Okay. Yeah, as I said, uh, so far we've got two songs that are lower tempoed, which is my number one surprise. I thought they'd be more higher tempoed, faster. Mm you know that kind of stuff um number two it's more kind of my style kind of heavy riffs <laughs> i kind of like both of these songs uh i like that it wasn't you know long but there really wasn't any switches it's just the same kind of droning in both songs uh i do feel like i think i like the first song's riff overall better than this one uh, it felt deeper a little bit. This one felt just very like industrial, you know, like cool. I like the drive, but the first one had more of like a, I don't know, just a better, better riff to me. So I'm going to put one over two, but very slightly. Uh, so far I would say I dig both of them. So yeah, I just, this was not what I expected. <laughs> Let's see what Sasha has. Cause Sasha's up next. He says, I think I won't disappoint Ryan with my pick. And then in parentheses, he says, he shouldn't have any expectations for my song anyway. <laughs> At least he knows. For headbanging, I prefer fast and arranged chaotic music. Surprise, surprise. Interesting. This might be more up Ryan's alley. There are only a few fast and aggressive parts in this song. Thus, they hit harder in my opinion. So the band is Blind Guardian, who we've had on the channel quite a bit, and the song is called Punishment Divine. With a title like that, it's divinely headbangable <laughs> because it's Punishment Divine. Divine Punishment is not really punishment. It's just like, let's hurt your neck, I guess. So here we go with number three. Okay, let me turn it up a bit. Hmm. Definitely a little bit higher tempo than the last two songs. But definitely more in the uh, speed metal sort of way. I like that. I like that stutter. I like that. This is 
very operatic blind guardian. What's that say? Something of the opera. A night of the op night of the opera. Is that the name of the album? I'm gonna be sh just very interested to see how Ryan reacts to these songs so far. Not what I expected this set to be, and we're halfway through. voice right there sounds totally like Strong Bad. Oh, no, Strong Bad! <laughs> Ooh, I like that little groove right here. Slow down about double time. Ready? Go. Ooh, kinda like the harmony there. That's very Kirk Hammond right there. <laughs> Jungle Groove. Oh, that was an interesting descent. Oh, went up. Question is, Sasha, would you ever make love to this song? <laughs> I can just see Sasha's little smirk. So, okay, so out of the three songs, that was probably my least favorite. <laughs> no surprise there. Uh, why? Because I like lower tempo. That was a little higher tempo. It did make me think while we were listening. Everybody on this channel knows that I don't really prefer screams slash growls. I just doesn't do anything for me. Uh, and I don't really like like neoclassical, like cheesy speed metal singing either. So it made me think because I would say this guy, you know, obviously the Mushuga was more like 
screaming growls or whatever you want to call it. Um, and this was more speed metal -y cheese, in my opinion. Uh, I wonder if there'd be funny if, it'd be, if we had a set of which do I like least? Because I'm like, which one do I like least? Do it, it, Cause I dislike both of the styles, but I don't know. I think I almost lean on, I would rather have growls and screaming, not between the very me screaming, but like more of like what we heard in the second song with Meshuga. I would prefer more of that, Amon Amarth, that kind of stuff than I do this kind of whatever, neoclassical speed metals, you know, high-pitched um, Daniel Hyman kind of stuff. <laughs> That's where I feel like. But if we had a whole set of like a battle between that, <laughs> that might be a funny set. But you just have to know I'm going to dislike every song, probably. Uh, it's just going to be, the, the set idea would be which songs or which singing do I hate the most. <laughs> it's going to be a negative set. But anyway, um, yeah, I'd be interested. I'm going to guess Ryan doesn't like that one. That would probably be his least favorite. Uh, uh, I think he, I think he might be in agreement with me on this one. Although he probably likes Meshuggah a lot. So he, I think he has two, one, three is going to be my guess. What Ryan likes right now, two, one, three. I like one, two, three. So we're kind of going <laughs> this way. We'll see if it continues on that. Next up is, um, our Mr. Cucumber and, uh, Mr. Cucumber doesn't have anything written because I literally said, you need to turn in a song today. Uh, I mean, I told him a couple weeks ago, but I don't think he was paying attention. So he got the song in. He didn't really say anything or describe the song. He just said, I, I think this is something that Ryan would like and is exactly what he's looking for. So let's find out what it is. I'll say what the title is and the band afterwards. But here we go. <laughs> This is exactly what I was expecting for this whole set. I think Ryan's gonna love this song. if I don't like this stuff. It's, it sounds more like Will Ramos, right? Is that his name? Ramos? Will Ramos? But not the... <sighs> but his, like, high screams sounds like Will Ramos to me. video of this drummer playing this because holy crap. This is the kind of drummer stamina that is just like superhuman. Woo! I like that. Ooh, that's cool. Dun, 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 dun. I like this part, go half time here. I can actually kind of understand him too. Oh. Love this part. Oh, 
Oh. Is that it? Wow, that is it. Um, so that was Infant Annihilator. Sounds totally like a band that I would expect that would play this kind of music. And the song was called Av Sacrament and of of, but it's Av O V. Of Sacrament and Incest is the name of the song. And that was turned in by Cucumber. My guess is that is going to be Ryan's number one. So I think for Ryan, it is uh, four, two, one, three. That's what I think, Ryan. Ryan, tell us what your order is because I want to see if I, my, my guess is correct or even close. For me, it's going to be one, four, two, three. I actually liked this. So in the context of I would never put this on a playlist and I would never play it in my car or anything like that. In that context, this was a good song. Um, I, I didn't mind the, you know, like the, it was intelligible in the context of, you know, I don't like that kind of stuff normally as like a, I would want to listen to this on my own time. Uh, the I liked some of the riffage and I liked some of the transitions and changes in it. So, <laughs> Uh, and it was short. It was only like probably four minutes, maybe three minutes. I mean, that that's good. I, I can handle that kind of stuff for two or three minutes. If it would have gone on for like six or seven, that would have been tough. <laughs> but yeah, so for me, I'm just going to, for the sake of this set in this context, I'm going to say obviously number one is my favorite. Four, two, three. So that brings us to the last song. I'm going to guess Ryan... Um, has uh, four, uh, two, one, three. And then I. this is going to be probably what Ryan likes, which is why I saved it for last, because Scott K and him tend to have the same taste, I think, when it comes to this kind of stuff in this context. So I'm figuring this is probably going to be right up uh, Ryan's alley. Not mine. I'm guessing I'm going to absolutely despise this, but we'll find out because I didn't actually despise the last song, which typically that kind of stuff I would. So he says this, I usually like to pick a song that many people in the group would like and appreciate. Mm, I would say half and half. <laughs> that, however, is not the goal this time, which I can see you fucking grinning when you say that. I can see you. This song is for my dear friend Ryan and you. <laughs> Because you like it too. Don't don't ask like, don't all be Mr. Like, this is for Ryan. No, this is for me and Ryan. My only hope is that by the end of this song, his neck will be too sore to headbang to any of the other songs that will be submitted. Well, it's the last one. So hopefully it just makes him go back and lay in bed all day. Have fun and rock on. He says this is an official lyric video, but it should be safe to show. Well, I think I put a, a, a Luma key on it filter. So, oh, and... One of the only band names I remember that's in this is what I said at the beginning. This is Archspire, and the song is called Bleed the Future. I guess Ryan already knows the song, but here we go. I hope it's not like eight minute long. Baseline there. Oh, 
that was pretty cool. Ooh, I kind of like this rhythm with his lyrics. I was gonna say, that was a short ass song. This reminds me of Tourniquet a little bit. I wonder if any of the people out there know Tourniquet, the Christian version of this. Oh, see, I, I was just going to ask, what, how is this song that much different than the last song we heard? This is why. It just, to have this kind of part in it, brilliant, smart. <laughs> right back into it. I want to see, Brian, you should make yourself, a, you should videotape you headbang into this. That, that middle part that was clean and chill, brilliant to put that in there. my surprise, I would actually put that one over the last one by just a hair, just a titch, because of that middle section that, and well, actually not just because of that. I think that middle section was a good additive of just like chill, da 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 da, back into the da 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 But also, I liked his rhythm with uh, the, the lyrics and what he, how he was delivering them. Uh, but I would say, when it comes to these kind of songs, I would feel like this song and the last song, when it's like... It's like there are so many similarities that it could almost be the same song. And I know that's going to be sacrilege for those of you who love this kind of music uh, that I just said that. But outside of what I just pointed out of the few differences of the way he read the lyrics and stuff like that, uh, the rhythm of it, and that middle section that kind of chilled... What would you say was so different between these two songs? Or would you say, like me, they seem pretty similar to each other? Uh, but I thought uh, that would put it above that one. So I guess my final take on this would be one, five, four, two, three. What I think Ryan is going to pick is five, four, two, one, three. That's what I think Ryan's going to be picked. Let's see if I chose that correctly. We'll have to find out after I get back. Uh, but these are the winners. Once again, Michael, uh, Para, Sasha, Cucumber, and Scott K from older set, uh, older new set number 10, which is a great segue to tell you that older new set number 11 has been turned in and is now on the schedule. So if you... Uh, go into the description of this video and click on the Excel document. You will see what songs we have done in the past, over the past years, as well as what's coming up on the schedule. So at this point, we are caught up now that uh, I have done this video. And uh, the next one is going to be on Saturday, April 20th, which is 
going to be the next Saturday after this. And that is a Michael, or no, that is a Colin slash Sasha dual set number two. And then Saturday, April 27th, we have just like some random songs. We have Ivy, who's turned in a song, as well as Rebecca Herman, who is uh, Michael's daughter, got to uh, win a song to submit. And then we have a new band called Added Color, who will be turning in uh, their new band reaction. And then uh, we have a Colin Crompton set after that. And then I think we have a Michael set, do we not? No, we do not. Um, so that is it. And then we are all caught up and then I will be going to Korea. And we will be getting out the last two final Casey Kasem's Top 40 2023 version as well uh, before I leave for Korea so that we know who the winner of that is because we have songs 10 through 6 and then 5 through 1 to get through and find out who or what my favorite top 10 is out of the top 40 for 2023. So that is all. Um, hope you guys are doing well. You hope you have a good weekend. I'm still going to be in recovery mode, I think, on Saturday as well. Um, it's going to take me a couple weeks, I think, to uh, start to get back to normal feeling. But uh, all that to say, this is your Captain saying. Like and subscribe and peace out.